there's some interesting numbers. I, I haven't updated these, forgive me, but they, these numbers were as reported in Rising Above the Gathering Storm. Rather alarming document about the state of American education, science education. So you look at how many graduating scientists and engineers we have in a year, 50,000. India, 70,000. Uh, China, half a million. Okay. Now, of course, China is a bigger population than America, but not by that factor. Okay? Not by that factor. So the numbers are great. I was on a talk show, and they said, well, is there anything that we graduate this many of in a year? So I, so I said, yeah, there, there is. Uh, it's lawyers, accountants, and physical therapists would come to this number here. So in our future, we will be able to litigate, and our muscles will feel good, but China will have all the scientists and engineers. That's really what's going on here. That's what where this plays out. Now, I have a series of maps that are kind of cool. Check this out. This is a map of the United States, color-coded by country, where each country is proportioned to how much land area it has. Well, of course, that's just a normal map. <laughs> so, the bigger countries are bigger than the smaller countries. Okay? All right. I have to start here so we're on the same page. Now let's size the countries according to population. That's something we... So what countries would get bigger if India would get really big, right? And uh, China would get big. Australia would shrink to practically nothing. Canada would disappear completely. <laughs> Nobody lives in Canada. Anyone who does, they're like at the border, right? <laughs> Amassing at the border. They would say that they're going to take over one day. So let's see this. <laughs> they're preparing to invade. So, so the thing about Canadians is that they just blend right in. And, and, and you notice they don't tell you they're Canadian. You ever notice that? You'll be like friends with them for months, and then then out comes it. Well, what about so like, you, Canadian? Oh yes, yeah, so I didn't tell you. I think they're trying to like take over the country, but that's a separate lecture. So let's scale the countries by population. And there you have it. Okay, Canada disappeared completely. Australia is, is nothing down there. And there's India and China, basically. India and China have 40% of the population of the world. Okay? There you have it. So this is kind of a morphing, all right? This is how this can happen. So let's now do it by scientific output, measured by Research papers published. America is a science powerhouse. It still is. Okay? Science powerhouse. 20th century science powerhouse. And 21st century science. So let's see. So America should get really big at that. Uh, what else? Europe does still quite a bit. So let's see. There's America. Okay? Do you see this sort of purple thing on the right? That's Japan. Look at Japan. Oh, oh, Japan. Check that out. All right. Europe goes large. Africa shrinks to practically nothing. All right. So you say, well, look, we're sitting pretty. This is not the data you should be looking at. You want to ask a different question. You want to ask, what is the difference in research papers published from 10 years ago to today? So now you can ask a different question. Where is the research growth? You can plot that in the same kind of chart. Let's see what that chart looks like. The research growth. There. <laughs> Something, <laughs> sound like you got stabbed, sir. Is that? <laughs> So, Europe is large. Europe has the new super collider that CERN, the one, the, the Large Hadron Collider. That's the one 
where everyone was worried that a black hole would get made. Remember that? <laughs> that same week that they turned on the collider, Wall Street collapsed. So I think the black hole went to Wall Street. See, I think that's what actually happened there. It was the same week. So Europe is large, China is large, Japan is large, and America is a shrinking shadow of itself. It's the trend that will affect our future, not what's happening at any given instant. So that scares me. So China, so what are they doing? They're like building stuff. The biggest engineering project there ever was, was in China. And what was that? The Great Wall of China. Today, the biggest engineering project in the world is in China. It's the Three Gorges Dam. This is like 10 times the size of the Hoover Dam. It is huge. It is, it's the biggest thing there ever was. Yeah, almost as big, probably not as long. It's not as long as the Great Wall of China. When I was a kid, you know, America had the fastest train, the fastest planes, the tallest buildings, the longest bridges. And at the time, I thought that was kind of juvenile to have that as bragging rights, right? It's like, who cares? And then you realize, if you have the longest bridge, some engineer had to figure out how to make the longest bridge. Because you're going places technologically that no one had been before. So you have to innovate to do that. The fastest train, the fastest plane. Each one of those requires an innovation. The moment you stop innovating, you recede. Because you're just sort of riding on what happened before, and the rest of the world passes you by. And so in China right now, there is a rebirth of science, technology, and discovery in ways that are not happening here in America. The trend line is real. 